I heard you on another podcast and uh, you give this tip about what to do before an interview. Yeah. So I sat down at the interview and I was up against a panel of four, four people evaluating me. And I sat down and I said, uh, you know, look, thanks for, for bringing me in before uh, we start. Could you please just tell me, you know, what it was on my CV that, you know, you liked that you wanted to bring me in for? And uh, the lady sitting opposite me, she said, oh, I, we really like this specific experience that you've got in this one area. And I kind of clocked them throughout the interview. I kept winding my mm -hmm. answers back to my <laughs> to my experience in the one area. That is so, so powerful. Yeah. I mean, it was that that's not something that. I developed, I have an acquaintance who said that he was using that strategy and it got him three better jobs in a row. Uh, but what I like about it is that it doesn't just alert you to what it is that they are were already committed to, you know, your strengths so that you could bring that back and remind them of that commitment that they already had to you and your, your resume. But it gets them to make an active public commitment to you right there to focus on your strengths. Here's the thing that we really like about you now for the rest of the interview. They are committed to that positive view of you, which makes it more likely they will continue to proceed in that vein. Yes. And is that because we have this desire to be consistent with ourselves? So when I'm saying, oh, uh, Robert is great and he's a great writer and he's this, when I go away tonight after this interview, for me to say opposite, that would cause me some internal discomfort. Is that a reason why? Is that exactly right? Both internally and to anyone who heard this interview. Yes. You wouldn't want to be seen as somebody who says one thing and then says the reverse uh, a few hours later. That just uh, that's not somebody that people like. Yes, yes. So if we get kind of granular, and since we're on the topic of um, jobs and interviews and whatnot, in the book you talk about interviewers assigning candidates wearing high quality apparel. Um, certain things that kind of and traits that would lead to better job suitability and yeah. starting salaries. Could you elaborate on this one? Yeah. Now, this was a study that looked at um, job interviews uh, across a variety of different settings and, and uh, industries. And they found that if the candidate wore higher quality clothing, they were assigned the trait of greater competence, that the positive associations with the, the, the clothing uh, s flowed into trait attributions mm -hmm. regarding this individual, right? Uh, which is a little worrisome, isn't it? it is. uh, that, <laughs> you, that people would make that automatic a connection, even though they had resumes and, uh, you know, previous histories in front of them, that they would allow that uh, superficial, I mean, in, in both senses of the word, superficial, it was just what, what, what they were wearing, uh, let that bleed into their uh, decision making, but they did. How could we turn that principle into something that we could apply at a next job interview, for instance? Well, again, uh, we, we, we need to be mindful of that bias on the part of individuals, even those individuals who were uh, looking deeply into our background and history and credentials. There's something else that's going on that we can manage, and that is how we comport ourselves mm -hmm. uh, just by the the clothing we wear. It seems to me it's worth uh, the expense of making sure that you are dressed in a way that implies that you um, have this competence uh, in people's minds. Yeah.